Hello everybody, my name is Zach Moss. I'm getting my PhD in France studying security policy, so I study what exactly is going on in the world and then I report it to you guys. Now, sources, description box below. Here's something that was interesting. I was scanning around the Department of Justice's website. I got my info off my phone, so bear with me if I'm staring down the whole time. Now, what's interesting is three professors from Harvard are getting charged with spying against the US government for the Chinese government which is very interesting. Now I'm going to summarize two out of the three cases because they're, well, they're pretty straightforward. It's for making false and fictitious statements. Now the third one, which is really interesting, which by the way, there's no additional detail about what false and fictitious statements they were making. I think it has to do with lack of reporting about their relations with the Chinese government. The last though, which is even more interesting, is Yao Song Zhang, which I probably butchered the name, so I apologize. Yasa Zhang, according to the Department of Justice, was attempting allegedly to smuggle 21 vials of biological material or biological research to China. Now this, this is, was uh, reported originally back in 2020, but there isn't any um, follow-up about what exactly is happening regarding this research. What is interesting though, is that I was started to scan through the FBI's website and started to ask them well, rhetorically ask, of course, what do they perceive to be the biggest threat between China and the US? What do they think? Well, obviously it ranged. It ranged quite a bit. Everything from, and I'm gonna post these sources as well if you'd like to check it out, but everything from they're having uh, economically malicious uh, business practices, whether it would be, for example, uh, having giving countries money that they can't repay so they can default and then this the Chinese government can own international airports. I do find it ironic that the US is arguing these types of things given the everything that we had done in the globalization realm and as well with the, uh, you know, supporting dominant dictators throughout the world. Sorry, my uh, memory was full of my camera, so I had to redo the video. I'm in a different hotel in a different state right before I leave to France. Anyway, I'm gonna follow up with the Chinese story right now. So first, uh, I was discussing earlier, obviously, the uh, individuals who are working with the Chinese government at Harvard. Now, one big question is, should we fear the Chinese, specifically uh, Chinese military occupation or military force or anything like that? Because that seems to be a threat that's not really mentioned by the FBI or any of these uh, other entities. So the question is, why don't they fear the military? Why aren't we hearing about uh, China stealing military technology or anything along these lines? Well, it's because it's kind of a logistical nightmare for them. So first things first, half of the Chinese military budget is spent dealing with internal affairs, whether it be Jinjing or Hong Kong or Tibet or some of these other locations. And on top of that, some of the people on the left are gonna be hearing this and gonna be bashing their face in because they don't wanna hear this specific fact anymore. But the US military budget, we spend more on our military budget, the US, the next 15 countries combined, most of which are our allies. If we were to cut our military budget in half, we would still spend more than China, Russia, Iran, Iraq, and North Korea all combined. So from that standpoint, that's not very threatening. And on top of that, what we also know based on studies is that China as a government entity is not any more efficient than the US, by example. Now you might be a little shocked to hear that, and we could get into the nuances of efficiency with their military specifically, especially when the US spends $2,000 on a $40 driver pin, things along these lines. That's where we can have a conversation. But the Chinese government at large, which runs the military, is statistically not as efficient. So I'm not overly concerned about the amount of money that China spends versus the US, by example. And I'm not using uh, the waste in the US as an example of uh, degrading the US military to say how China has a, a chance, if that makes any sort of sense. Next, they do not have any allies in this region, the Indo-Pacific region to be specific. They only have North Korea and informally Russia, but that's only dependent on whether or not the US is in this region. The US on the other hand has roughly six or seven different types of countries as um, allies in that region as well. For example, we have Australia, we have more or less Malaysia as well, Indonesia, Singapore, uh, Japan, South Korea, so on and so forth. Next, the technology for the Chinese government is pretty poor 
in comparison. They do have certain things that we are worried about, such as EMPs, so on and so forth. But generally speaking, the US has about one to two generation gap in technology versus the Chinese government, which is important to note. The last one I wanna mention here is combat experience. China has not been in a formal war since 1979 when they decided to go to war in Vietnam. They were there for a whopping month. They didn't fare too well, they decided to get out. So if the China were to get into a fight, say for example with the US, that would be one of the first formal wars that they have been in this entire time. Now I don't mean small sting operations, which are a lot different. But anyway, I wanted to finish up this video. Thought you guys would find that interesting. Think about, uh, <laughs> how the Harvard scientists may or may not have been collaborating, yeah, collaborating, collaborating with the Chinese government. I personally am not particularly worried about it and I'm not worried about China in general. Thank you.